A pleasant day to everyone. So this is the second part of how to answer the CLE. Or this is already the third uh, video presentation beginning with how to prepare on the CLE. Then the first part of how to answer the CLE. This is now the second part of how to answer the criminology licensure examination. Once more, this is Dr. Ariel D. Manlusok, the director of the ADM RC. Okay, let's now go to the third rule. In case of a situational, it is better to make an illustration. Situational is very common in criminal law and jurisprudence or even in CDI, Crime Detection and Investigation, and in some aspects of uh, criminalistics because of legal medicine. Okay, so what is an example of this? This one, a very simple example. Peter is the son of John. James is the son of Peter. Now, from that scenario, here comes the first question. What crime is committed if John would kill James? Now, when you look at the question or the case statement, you notice there are three names mentioned here. And somehow, it is quite confusing looking on the sentence. What is the better way? The better way is to make use of the marginal portion of the test paper. No? Make an illustration so that you can easily understand which is or who is who. Who is Peter, who is John, and who is James in the scenario. So since the question is about killing, obviously the options will be running on either A, is it a parasite? B, is it a murder? C, is it infanticide? Or D, homicide? Okay? So after you answer one question, there are times or many times now a trend in the CJ, CLJ that the examiner will put a follow-up question like this. What if James is an illegitimate son? And number three, what if James is a three days old infant? Okay, so again, what is the first thing to do? It's better to make an illustration. So that's what we see on the next slides. Oh, okay, so this is now the case illustration. We have Chan, we have Peter, and James. So here, the relationship is very clear. John is the father of Peter. Peter is the father of James. Therefore, John is the grandfather of James, and James is the grandson of John. Now, let's go back to the question. John killed James. Okay, so definitely we cannot choose infanticide because infanticide deals with an element of age. There is no mention on the facts of the case about the age of the victim. So infanticide can never be an option. Okay, so we eliminate infanticide. Now, is there a relationship between John and and James. Obviously, there is a direct relationship. John is the grandfather of James. So when relationship enters, we may think now of parasite because that is one essential element of a parasite, the relationship between the killer and the victim. Okay? So, are we going to think of homicide or murder? Not yet. Now, the proper sequence when we deal with crimes against person is we have to think of abortion because that is the very basic killing of unborn fetus. So if the baby is already born, abortion is left behind, infanticide will come in. But infanticide begins from birth, okay, from birth, from the cutting of the umbilical cord up to less than 
three days old. So there is no mention about that. So there is no infanticide. If the crime is not abortion infanticide, we go down to parasite. And what is the essential element of killing is the relationship. Okay. So if you look at the provision of Article 246 under the Revised Penal Code Title 8, Crimes Against Person, you will notice that there are three categories of killing under parricide. And what are those categories? The first category, if you kill your father, your mother, or your child, regardless of their whether or not they are legitimate or illegitimate. So legitimacy is not uh, necessary if the killing is between father, mother, and child. Okay. The second category is if you kill your spouse. And the law said legitimate spouse. So, hindi po kasama. We do not include living partners, friends with benefits. Okay? So, those are not included because the law is a specific legitimate spouse. Okay? Okay. Some might be asking, sir, what about in Muslim? Okay, in Muslim, uh, they are allowed to marry as much as four, but parasite is limited only to the first wife. Okay, so the killing of the second, third, or fourth wife may either be homicide or murder, depending on the attending circumstances. Okay, and what is the third uh, category? The killing of your other direct ascendants and direct descendants, provided that they must all be legitimate. So, it's specific, legitimate. So, here, there is no mention about legitimacy. So, we presume that James, John, Peter are all in legitimate status. So, the crime will definitely fall on the third category. So, the answer is what? Parasite. Okay? Why not murder? Okay. Murder will only come to play when there is an attending, qualifying, aggravating circumstances Okay, any one of the enumerations under the Article 248, uh, rather 248, yes, of the Revised Penal Code on circumstances that qualifies the killing to murder. But take note very carefully. You don't answer murder if the crime is falling either in, in the infanticide or parricide. Okay? Because we only enter murder if the killing does not fall in any of these two, the infanticide and parasite. Okay, now let's have the follow-up question. What if James is an illegitimate son? So if James is an illegitimate son of Peter, therefore, to John, who is the grandfather, he is also a legitimate. So therefore, if he is illegitimate, he is no longer included in the crime of parasite. Why? Because parasite is an exclusive enumeration. Okay? Ika nga sa salitang Latin, exclusio unius excusat. What the law did not include, it automatically excludes. So therefore, the crime will only be either homicide or murder. But which of the two are we going to favor? We have to favor homicide. Why? Because there is no mention of any qualifying, aggravating circumstances. Okay. Now, another follow-up question. What if James is a two-days-old infant? There you are. There is an element of age. And we know that the killing of an infant less than three days old falls under infanticide. So in this case, the answer will be infanticide. So see, one case scenario, but the examiner may give you two, three, or even more questions. Okay? All he has to do is to make some modification with certain facts or circumstances of the case. Okay? So that's one example of a case analysis and the use or importance of illustration. Okay? Let's have more of illustration now. Okay, Peter enjoyed the company of his barcada, barcada, peer group in English. Due to his association with his barcada, he learned their modus operandi in committing certain crimes. What theory will best describe the above scenario? Okay, is it A, strange theory? I don't think so. Why? Because a strange theory, if we compare it with the question, this is focused on learning criminal behavior through association. 
the strange theory is the theory that focuses on the concept of goal that was blocked that leads to frustration. And frustration makes a man vulnerable to temptations or committing unlawful acts. So that's strange theory. So definitely, that's not okay, compatible with the question. Is it social reaction theory? I don't think so. Social reaction theory is otherwise known as labeling theory. It is the theory focused on how? How? The people in our society branded or labeled certain criminal acts or people, okay, which leads or also contributes to criminality. So definitely there is no mention about that in the question. Is it social bond? Social bond is one of the sub theory under the social control theory. And social ban is known for four elements. And what are those elements? The elements of belief, involvement, attachment, and commitment. Or in a short acronym, we call it BIAC. Again, BIAC. So attachment is very important because when people are attached to the society, they will think twice or they it lessens the probability that they will commit violation of the social rules. Okay, so obviously it is not A, it is not B, it is not C. So looking back at the question, the clue is already there. Learned in the process of association. So what is that theory developed by Edwin Zuderland, the dean of criminology? That criminal behavior are learned through the process of communication. And that is differential association theory. And that is the correct answer to this item. Let's have now another set of uh, situational example of question in the board. Peter is a Chinese national. He went to the Philippines for a vacation. He committed a crime in the Philippines. What characteristics of the criminal law states that the criminal law is binding upon all persons who live or sojourn in the Philippine archipelago. Okay. So you notice in this question, it is consists of three sentences. But if you are going to analyze it very clearly, the question is just landing on the third sentence, which is what characteristics of the criminal law states that the criminal law is binding upon all persons who live or sojourn in the Philippine archipelago. So obviously, the first two questions are just preliminary statement. And as a matter of fact, in this kind of scenario, the first two statements or sentences were just built up in order for the examinee to consume much time reading and analyzing okay so one tips that i could give you with regard to this aspect one tip is that if the last sentence will stand alone it means that is the only issue never mind the first and the second sentence so let's go now with the choices and they are a generality b territoriality c prospectivity and d retrospectivity now, obviously, these are referring to the basic dogmatic principle of our criminal law. No? The dogmatic principle or the basic principle of criminal law. Now, let's go back to the question and compare it with the choices. The issue is about the principle that our criminal law binds all persons, regardless of age, race, gender, Okay, or status. So obviously, the issue here is not about the place. It's about the person. So you look at the choices and you will notice two of the options are, are definitely wrong options. And they are what? The prospectivity and the retrospectivity. Okay? They are definitely the wrong options. Now, why did I check immediately about generality? Because the issue is about person. And when we talk about person, we are referring to the general application of the criminal law. Now, why it is not territoriality? Yeah, 
definitely some will answer territoriality because there was a statement or there is a statement on the later part which says who live or sojourn in the Philippine archipelago. Now, take note, who live or sojourn in the Philippine archipelago is just a description. Okay? It merely describes person. Okay? So, therefore, the main idea here or the main subject is the person, not okay, the Philippine archipelago. So, therefore, it cannot be a territory reality because territoriality focus on the concept of what place rather than the person okay okay let's have another situation wang bu with intent to burn Burned the house of Benny Rocha and killing the latter's housemate. What crime is committed by the former? Let's look at the choices. A. Murder. B. We have arson. C. We have arson with homicide. And D. We have reckless imprudence resulting in arson with homicide. Now, in this kind of situation wherein we are talking about specific crimes enumerated under the revised penal code, one tip that I could give you that is very important is that you have to identify the intent. Why? Because the intent is the specific element of a certain crime. So if you will go directly to the result and without minding the intent, you might go to the wrong answer. So again, one important tip that I could give you with regard to specific crimes enumerated under the device, you must identify specifically what is the intention of the offender or the felon in committing a certain crime. So here is obvious the intention is to burn, not to kill. So if the intention is to burn, then murder cannot be a correct answer. Okay? And what crime has the element of intent to burn? Definitely, it's arson. Okay? Now, why arson, not arson with homicide, not reckless imprudence resulting in arson with homicide? But again, as I said, we don't answer by looking at one or two items among the choices. We have to look and analyze all of the choices and make a comparison and eliminations. Again, Murder cannot be a correct answer. Why? Because the intent is to burn, not to kill. Okay. What about letter C, arson with homicide? We don't have arson with homicide in our jurisprudence. Okay? Because the revised penal code and its jurisprudence is clear. If the intention is to burn, even if there is an accidental killing that took place in the course of the fire, the crime is only arson. But, the death will constitute as an aggravating circumstances. If the intention is to kill and fire was used for purposes of killing the person, then the crime will not be arson but more of murder. Why? Because the intent is to kill and the use of the fire is just an aggravating circumstances as one of those enumerated under Article 248 of the revised penal code. Now, what about reckless imprudence resulting in arson with homicide? It cannot be a correct answer also. Why? Because reckless imprudence connotes the idea that the crime was not done intentionally. It is something that is done out of fault, out of negligence, out of what we call culpa. Okay? So this is what we call in criminal law, book one, the concept, uh, not book one, in book two, the concept of quasi-offense, okay? Under the, the 14th title of the book two. So therefore, the correct answer is obviously arson, okay? So that is how you approach this kind of question. Now, what if A, with intent to kill, B, burn the house of B, causing the latter's death? 
So this is the typical example of what? Murder. Using fire as a means for killing. Why? Because the intent is very clear. To kill, not to burn. The use of fire here is the qualifying aggravating circumstances. Okay, let's have here another scenario. Peter is a Chinese national. He went to the Philippines by boarding a Japanese registered vessel for a vacation. When the vessel was already in the Philippine port, he committed a crime inside the vessel. What will be the consequence? Okay. Look at the scenario. It's too lengthy, but we don't have a choice. We have to analyze them because each and every sentences here are now matter. Why? Because they have an essential part in the solution of this situation. Okay. Now, first question. Okay. Peter is a Chinese. Yes. Okay. He is boarding what? A Japanese registered vessel. Okay. But... What is more important issues here? The more important issues here is now is where is the vessel located when the crime was committed? Although the vessel is Japanese registered, but it was already in the Philippine port when Peter committed a crime. So as we discussed earlier, one of the characteristics of our criminal law is territoriality, which simply states that Okay, the criminal law of the Philippines is enforceable within the Philippine archipelago or within the national territory. Here, the situation is very clear. The vessel is in our territory, therefore, the Philippine law should apply, not the Japanese law. Okay, so let's look at the choices. A, he is liable under the Japan law. Obviously, that is one of the very obvious wrong answer to this question. Letter B, he is liable under the Philippine law. I said that a while ago. That is the best answer. But wait, we have letter C and D to look at. Letter C, he is not liable under the Philippine law. Obviously, this is wrong. Why? Because it is opposite to the letter D. So once more, the correct answer is not letter C. Because it is opposite to letter B. Now, letter D, he is not liable for he board a Japanese vessel. So, that is a very, very far uh, issue here. Because, as we said, as I said a while ago, the vessel is already in the Philippine territory. Whether it is Philippine vessel or foreign vessel is no longer material. Unless the vessel is a war vessel. In which case, the origin of the vessel will be the first priority. But in this case, obviously, there is no mention about war vessel. The assumption, the vessel is merely a commercial vessel. And in commercial vessel, we follow the rule on uh, territoriality since that is applied or the rule used in the English rule, which is adopted by the Philippines. Okay. Next, PO1 Dina Natuto arrested Mr. Mandorukot. Okay, PO1 Dina Natuto arrested Mr. Mandorukot in flagrante delicto, stabbing Ms. Malu Ang to death. Okay, PO1 Dina Natuto failed to file the appropriate case within the period of 36 hours. For what crime he can be charged due to failure to release Mr. Rukot? Now, the issue is to be clarified here. Who is the offender here? P01. So, he is a public officer. Okay. So, obviously, it cannot be an issue of unlawful arrest. It cannot be an issue of illegal detention. Sir, why? Why it cannot be an illegal detention? Because illegal detention is committed by a person who belongs to the private person category, not public officer. So here, the offender is public officer with duty to arrest. So he cannot be in the concept of illegal detention. Okay? Now, why not unlawful arrest? Unlawful arrest is committed by any person, but it is a crime that deals with arrest, not actually detention. Okay? 
So, when you arrest a person without legal ground, but your purpose is to bring him to the nearest police station, jail, or to the proper authority, that is the act of unlawful arrest. And the law said, it is committed by any person, which means it can be done by a private individual, it can also be committed by a public officer. So, A and B are wrong options. Okay, delaying release is quite very close. Okay, but it's not the best answer. Why? Because the correct answer is arbitrary detention. For what reason? Simply because this is a public officer. He detained a person with legal grounds, but he failed to file the case to the proper judicial authority on a provided prescription. No? The specific answer supposedly here is delay in the delivery of arrested person to the proper judicial authority, which is under Article 125 of the Title 2 of the Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code. But you will notice it's not one among the four choices. And sir, why we, did we answer arbitrary detention? The reason is very obvious. If you read the criminal law annotated book written by uh, Luis Reyes, no? the Centennial Book on Criminal Law, you will see there that Article 124, Arbitrary Detention, Article 125, Delay in the Delivery, and Article 126, Delay in Release, are all under the classification of what? Arbitrary Detention. So, just like what we discussed on our first part of our discussion, if the specific answer is not there in the options, then we might consider the general term. And here, that is the applicable technique. So the answer is arbitrary detention simply because it is the generic term that we apply under the provision of Article 124, 125, and 126. Okay? So illegal detention is wrong, unlawful arrest is wrong, delaying release is wrong. Arbitrary detention is the perfect answer. Okay, so these are the basic principles of criminal law. Just to give you a short uh, description so that you will not be at loss. If the issue is who, then that's more of generality. If the issue is where the law shall be applied, that is territoriality. If the issue is when the law shall be applied, that is the question of prospective or prospectivity. Okay? So this is just a short or summary in relation to the first uh, uh, two questions a while ago that we have with respect to the principle of criminal law. Okay. Fourth rule. We have to increase our vocabulary. Actually, those who have a wide vocabulary has a great advantage. Why? Because you can easily understand the question if all the words that mix up the questions are known to you. But if there are words or word there in the statement that is not known to you, it is not clear enough for you, then you have a really real true problem about understanding the question. Okay, so let's have an example of a question given already in the exam. The study of a relationship between criminality and the milieu. Okay, the study of relationship between criminality is quite a simple statement. And milieu, I think this is the problem. Milieu is not a common word, or shall we say, is that a simple word? Okay, so how can we answer a question that we do not understand? That's a big problem. But still, we can find the answer somehow. If we know uh, a little, uh, what we call this, uh, educated guess. Okay, but let's go with the process. Criminal demography. Letter B, criminal ecology. Letter C, criminal physical anthropology. And D is criminal epidemiology. So there is no issue here about criminality because all of the four options carry the title criminal. So, they are all qualified. But, let's go back to Milieu. No? Okay. 
if we look at this the, the thesaurus okay one of the kind of dictionary that is more focused on synonyms and antonyms ano yung mga words na kasing kahulugan at kabaligtaran okay so dun tayo sa synonyms kasi we want to know what milieu is so in the thesaurus milieu is defined as surroundings okay so surroundings is what environment so now we can easily answer this question because we know the meaning of that word. Demography is more on population. So does it match? No. So we eliminate demography. Okay. Is it physical anthropology? That is another far option because physical is physical body, feature. Anthrop is man. So this is focused on the physical constitution of man. So that is not an obviously a correct answer. It is a wrong option. So, what are the two remaining close options? They are the ecology and epidemiology. But I bet some will answer ecology and some will answer epidemiology. Okay. So, it cannot be ecology. Why? Because ecology is more on the aspect of the distribution. Okay? The spatial distribution in, of the resources in our surrounding. So many people commit a wrong interpretation of ecology as environment. That is not correct. Okay? Ecology is more than just an environment. Okay? So if ecology is wrong, the correct answer is obviously epidemiology. The study of crime focus on the relationship of criminality with what? With the environment or surroundings. Okay, now another technique that I learned from my readings of some foreign dictionary is the concept or the art of word or title anatomy. If we know the art of interpreting a word, especially compounded word or title, you can have a greater chance of understanding things which are not uh, that so familiar to you. Okay? So, what are these uh, rule of art of word anatomy? Let's have an example and later an application. It is a condition of man who can hold a pen but unable to write. So, the issue here is about the condition of a man who can hold a pen but he cannot be able to write. Okay. The choices are A. Agraphia B. We have cacography. C. We have calligraphy. And D. We have the so-called ambidextrous. Okay. So ambidextrous is from the word ambi which means both. So this is very far from the question. Okay. But this is also already asked in the word several times in criminalistics. And the ambidextrous, people who can use both is left and right hand. Okay, in doing things. Okay, that's ambidextrous. Okay. Now, what about calligraphy? Calligraphy, I think, is a familiar word. This is referring to the art beautiful writing. From the word kali, which means beautiful. Okay. So, what's the opposite of beautiful? It's ugly. And that is represented by the word kako. So, kakography is the opposite of calligraphy. So, obviously, B, C, and D are wrong options okay so what is the correct answer the correct answer is agraphia why if you look at the word agraphia it is consisting of actually three parts and what are the three parts of that word a which is the prefix graph which is the root word or the word roots and the uh, which is the suffix now, what is the art of interpreting words like this? You begin with the suffix. Okay? The suffix ya means a condition or pertaining to something. What about the second step? Is to go to the prefix. And what is the prefix? Ah. The meaning of ah is without or absence if we attach it to a root word. So, if we follow or go through with the sequence... Ya, a condition. A is absence or without ability. And graph means what? Writing. Perfect. Agraphia is a condition of man 
without ability to write. So now you know, every time we attach the word ya at the back portion of the root word, it means a condition. And every time we attach a at the beginning of the word, it connotes an absence or without. Just like the term aspermia in chemistry. Now, a is the prefix. Sperm is the root word. Ya is the suffix. So, obviously, aspermia means absence of sperm. No? Kung gagawin natin medyo kolokyal, asa ng sperm niya, ano yung a? Ala. No? Ala siyang sperm. Okay. That is joke, but that is also a true application of word anatomy. Okay. Another example of uh, utilizing word anatomy as a technique. It is the process of taking magnified photograph of a small object obtained by attaching a camera to the ocular of a compound microscope. So this one question usually makes a lot of examinees okay, confused about because the options here are very, very close to each other. And what are they? Let us look at the choices. A. Is it photo micrograph? B. Is it photo micrography? C. Is it microphotography? Or D. Is it photo macrography? Oh my God. They look very similar. It's just a matter of a difference of one letter. I and A. Micro, macro. Then the other two options, binaligtad lang yung photo at saka yung micro at yung photo at macro. Okay. Now I give you two techniques here. Or two tips. First tip, what is the question? Process. So if the question is about the process, your answer must end up with letter Y. Just like the word photography, the process of reproducing image. If the question is, it is the magnified photograph. Okay, so we have to remove Y. The answer should be end with H. Just like the word photograph. So, very basic. Photography is the process. Photograph is the result. Actually, it's defined as the positive result of photography. So, obviously, with that first tip or technique, letter A is a wrong option because it ends with H, not with a Y. Okay. Now, why microphotography is wrong? Because the letter C starts with micro, it is the opposite of macro. Micro is small, paliitin. So this is the process of reducing a small, a big object to a small size. So that's not the question about. Now what about photo macro? Photo macro is enlarging, the process of enlarging a small object. So there is no mention here about enlarging. What is mentioned here is very obvious, microscope is attached with the camera. So therefore, what is the word there in the microscope? The first two syllables, micro. Photo is representing the camera because that is the, uh, the basic tool that we use in photography. So photo plus microscope, then your photograph end with Y, that is photo micrography. The perfect answer to this question. Now, if my question is, it is the magnified photograph that we captured using camera and microscope, then your answer will be letter A, photo micrograph, because that question calls for the result, not for the process. But here, the question is process, so your answer is what? Ends with Y, photo micrography. Okay, so this is the summary. Okay, so very clear. We have the prefix, we have the root word, and the suffix. But again, you must start with the suffix, go on with the prefix, then you end with the root word. Okay, so the process ends with Y, the result ends with H. For the simple reason that photography is the process, photograph is the positive result of photography. Okay. Okay, what is corpus delicti? Oh, uh, this question is very popular in many subjects in the board. No? Law, CDI, criminalistics, okay? and even in social. So, 
four or five of the six categories of subjects, you might encounter this corpus delicti. Okay? So, the question here is about the meaning of corpus delicti. But here again, the examiner used the multiple selection process. Okay? Why? Because again, he enumerated three options. The essential element of the crime. Roman numeral number two. The fact or circumstances that will prove that the crime was committed. And Roman numeral three, the dead body. Now, this, this is not the the choices really but these are the basis of your options okay the multiple options here then we have a one and two only b we have one only c one two and three and d number two only okay now remember corpus delicti is the latin word the literal meaning is body of the crime in this in being dead body Okay, so the dead body in a crime is basically just a part of a corpus delicti. It's not the entire corpus delicti. Why? Because corpus delicti is the essential element of a crime. That is the basic meaning of what corpus delicti. The other meaning is, the more elaborated is, it is the facts or the circumstances that will prove the existence of a crime. So therefore... What is the answer? It cannot be one only because one and two are both correct options. And three is a wrong option. So therefore, the best answer here is letter A. One and two only. Okay, why dead body is not correct? Because it doesn't follow that when there is a dead body, there is automatically a crime. We know that there are deaths caused by natural causes or there are deaths due to uh, accident or pure accident, which in which case crime is not applicable in those kind of situation. So the answer is A. Okay, fourth rule. We have to increase our vocabulary. Actually, those who have a wide vocabulary has a great advantage. Why? Because you can easily understand the question if all the words that mix up the questions are known to you. But if there are words or word there in the statement that is not known to you, it is not clear enough for you, then you have a really real true problem about understanding the question. Okay? So let's have an example of a question given already in the exam. The study of a relationship between criminality and the milieu. Okay, the study of relationship between criminality is quite a simple statement. And milieu, I think this is the problem. Milieu is not a common word, or shall we say, is that a simple word? Okay, so how can we answer a question that we do not understand? That's a big problem. But still, we can find the answer somehow. If we know uh, a little, uh, what we call this, uh, educated guess. Okay, but let's go with the process. Criminal demography. Letter B, criminal ecology. Letter C, criminal physical anthropology. And D is criminal epidemiology. So there is no issue here about criminality because all of the four options carry the title criminal. So, they are all qualified. But, let's go back to Mileu. No? Okay. If we look at this the, the thesaurus, okay, one of the kind of dictionary that is more focused on synonyms and antonyms. Ano yung mga words na kasing kahulugan at kabaligtaran? Okay. So, dun tayo sa synonyms kasi we want to know what Mileu is. So, in the thesaurus, milieu is defined as surroundings, okay? So, surroundings is what? Environment. So, now, we can easily answer this question because we know the meaning of that word. Demography is more on population. So, does it match? No. So, we eliminate demography. Okay. Is it physical anthropology? That is another far option because physical is physical body, feature. Anthrop is man. So this is focused on the physical constitution of man. So that is not an obviously 
a correct answer. It is a wrong option. So, what are the two remaining close options? They are the ecology and epidemiology. But I bet some will answer ecology and some will answer epidemiology. Okay, so it cannot be ecology. Why? Because ecology is more on the aspect of the distribution. Okay, the spatial distribution in of the resources in our surrounding. So many people commit a wrong interpretation of ecology as environment. That is not correct. Okay, ecology is more than just an environment. Okay, so if ecology is wrong, the correct answer is obviously epidemiology. The study of crime focus on the relationship of criminality with what? With the environment or surroundings. Defining titles. If the title consists of only one word, then it's so easy to define. But if it is consists of two or three or four more words, then you follow the rule. Okay? Just like when we uh, analyze or when we dissect a word. You, if the word or title consists of two words, then you start with the last word, then you go back to the first word. Just like this commonly used term in medici medicine or legal medicine. No? Many are confused about legal medicine and medical jurisprudence. The technique, the tip is very simple. What is the second word? Medicine. What is the first word? Legal. So, legal medicine is the branch of medicine applied to administration of justice or for legal purposes. So, that's how you interpret it. The second word is the branch or the study. The first word is the application. Now, what about medical jurisprudence? The second word is jurisprudence. This deals with the art of interpreting laws, application of law to actual cases. That is jurisprudence. Okay, So it's a branch of law that we apply to the practice of medicine or to those involved in the practice of medicine. That is medical jurisprudence. Okay. So you can apply that in any titles that you will encounter as long as it is consists of two words. You begin with the second word, then you go to the first word for purposes of its application. And the, another rule, interpretation of words combined with number. Now the basic rule is this. If the word okay, is the one that is mentioned first, before the number, the general rule is we don't include the number. Like for example, below 9. So, nauna yung word na below bago yung 9. So, hindi po kasama yung 9. Just like in infanticide, less than 3 days. So, hindi po natin isasama yung exactong 3 days. Because nauna po yung word na less than. So, mababa sa 3. So, that is 2 days old pababa. Ganun po ang concept. Now, kung now na naman ang word, ay number bago yung word. Like for example, at uh, two or more. Ayan. Okay? Nauna yung two bago yung or more. So, magsisimula ka sa two pataas. Okay? Or you say, two below. So, dalawa, pababa. So, magsisimula ka sa two, pababa. You have one and zero. That's the basic rule on interpreting a combining of word and number. Now, one exemption to that, to those mentioned rule is that when we use the word at least, at least connotes an idea of a minimum. It is the beginning. Okay, so when we say at least, like in the case of a preliminary investigation, under rule 112 of the rules of criminal procedure, anong sabi? At least four years, two months, and one day. So, at least. So, sisimulan mo sa four years, two months, and one day, pataas. So, yun po ang pwedeng gamitan ng preliminary investigation. Now, let's have an example here. What kind of sentence prisoner is sentenced to serve three years and one day? Okay. So, ano po ang nauna? Three. Bago yung years. So, kasama na yung three. Kaya lang, there's a conjunction here. And one day. And connotes plus or addition. Plus. Addition po ito. So, ang tinatanong dito, anong tawag sa isang bilanggo na may parusang tatlong taon at 
isang araw. Okay, now let's look at the choices. Municipal prisoner, A. B, provincial prisoner. C, we have a city prisoner. And D, we have insular prisoner. So, it cannot be municipal. Why? Because municipal caters for those with sentence of one day to six months. So, it's too far from the question. Eliminate. Letter B is not also a correct answer because it mentioned about six months and one day. There is no mention about six months in the statement. City are those with sentence with one day, two, three years. Now, let's look at now. In the question, nauna po yung three years, dinagdagan ng one day. Ang city, magsisimula sa one day and maximum of three years. Do they match? No. So, therefore, it's not city. And the last option, I think, is the best answer because we don't have any other options left. That is what? Insular prisoner. Otherwise known, as I said before, merong other terms. No, This is also known as national prisoner. Okay, Based on the classification of prisoner pursuant to presidential decree 29. Okay. Yan po. Okay, napakadaling sagutan, di ba? If you know the rule of interpretation. Another example of simple question yet confusing. What constitutes a large-scale estafa? Many committed mistakes here because many are familiar with organized, syndicated, but they are not quite familiar with the word large-scale. Now, large-scale and organized are not exactly the same. Why? Because organized or syndicated crime focuses on the number of offenders. According to the Palermo Convention held in Italy, organized or syndicated usually consists of at least three or more offenders. Again, offenders. So therefore, A and B cannot be a correct answer because this is counting on offenders. And the question is, large scale, in large scale, what we count is the victims. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is three or more victims. Now that is the other kind of estafa. So, when you committed a staff against three or more persons, your crime is large-scale staff. But if you, together with some of your friends, about three or more, you commit a staff, oh, several staff, your crime is more of syndicated because you are already three or more and you collaborate you know, with one another. That is the concept okay, of between large scale and organized. In our country, we follow the concept of three or more, except in the case of uh, syndicated drug trafficking where the provision of Republic Act 9165 is clear, at least two or more will already constitute as a syndicated drug trafficking. There are how many deputies assigned to the chief PNP? To assist him in the performance of his official duty effectively. This question is commonly asked in law enforcement administration and yet many commits mistake. Why? Because they somehow uh, misunderstood or somehow they are careless in thinking about there is a difference between deputy chief okay, and what? And rank. Especially before, no? Nung hindi pa bago yung ating rank, meron rank tayo na Deputy Director General. So, marami po na ko confuse doon. So, iba po ang position title, iba po ang rank. Okay? Here, obviously, the question is title, position, hindi po rango. So, ang pinaka first in line, the first in command, based on the principle of unity of command, is the Chief PNP. He is assisted by two deputy chief, one for administration and one for operation. So, the answer is now obvious. The answer is what? Two. But if the question goes like this, how many police lieutenant general rank? Na dati, ang tawag natin dyan ay deputy director general rank. 
Yan, yan yung nakaka-confuse noon. So, medyo maganda na ngayon kasi uh, ginawa ng, binago na, no? Nang batas ang ang title. Okay? So, how many police lieutenant general rank? There are three. Bakit naging three? Kasi meron po tayong dalawang deputy chief na may rangong lieutenant general or three stars. Pero yung ating chief of the directorial staff also has the rank of three-star general or lieutenant general. So, the two deputy chief plus the chief of staff, they are what? Three. With the rank of three-star general in our PNP. So, sila po yung tinatawag nating the command group. The chief PNP is the first in command. The deputy chief for admin is the second in command. The deputy chief for operation is the second in command. And the chief of the directorial staff, or somehow we called it the chief of staff in the national headquarters as the fourth in command. Okay, I hope that is clear because this is always asked in the exam. Okay, the crime committed is punishable by imprisonment of at least four years, two months, and one day. Okay, it was committed in Metro Manila or chartered cities. Ano po yon yung mga cities na may kanya kanya ng charter na, no? So they are usually the cities in the provinces, just like Cebu City, okay, Naga City, Tacloban City. There are cities, but they are in the provinces. No, they are called chartered cities. Okay, where should complaint be filed in order to initiate a criminal action? So let's look at the choices. To file a complaint directly with the municipal trial court. Okay, wait a minute. At least four years, two months, and one day calls for preliminary investigation. And in that case, we don't practice direct filing of case in the MTC. So A is obviously wrong. But let's look at the other options. To file a complaint directly with the MTC or Metropolitan Trial Court, that is obviously wrong because we don't practice direct filing in Metropolitan Trial Court. The general practice in Metropolitan Trial Court, all complaints should be filed to the office of the prosecutor. We call it the principle of regular filing of criminal complaints. Is it letter C? File a complaint to the police station? Oh, obviously this is wrong. We don't file complaint to the police stations. Okay? Normally, the complaint is filed to the office of the prosecutor, to the court, not to the police station. And letter D, I think this is the best answer. Why? Because A, B, and C are wrong options. At the prosecutor's office for the conduct of preliminary in investigation. Now, take note, hindi lang po uh, prosecutor ang pwedeng mag-conduct ng preliminary investigation. There are also other uh, officers, or executive officers, or quasi-judicial officer who are authorized to conduct preliminary investigation. So, the answer is letter D. That's the perfect answer. Okay, which of the following is the age of full irresponsibility? Now, be careful about this word. There is the prefix IR, irresponsibility. Okay, A, those age 15 and below. B, those who are over 15 but under 18 but acted without discernment. Or C, those over 15 but under 18 acted with discernment. Or D, those who are 18 years old up to 70 years old. Now, the question is irresponsibility full, which means he does not incur criminal liability. Okay? So, pursuant to the Republic Act 9344 as amended by 10630, if I'm not mistaken, the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act of 2006, 15 years old below is now the age of full irresponsibility. What does it mean? They are exempted from criminal liability. Although we know that the parents, guardian, or whoever in charge of them may shoulder the civil liability in case of civil damages. Okay. Now, what about B? 
Over 15, under 18, acted without discernment, this can also be exempted. Yes, but not automatically. Why? Because discernment must have been established okay, by the court before they can truly exempt this child for criminal liability. Now, this child in conflict with the law because of the word without discernment. But those over 15, under 18, or yung 16 to 17 year old, para mas shortcut, who acted with discernment, meron po siyang responsibility because the case may continue. The trial might proceed. Although, this kind of child in conflict with the law is entitled for diversion proceeding. Okay? With, what is that? Diversion from the word divert, which means we will go uh, out of the, the usual practice or usual flow of criminal justice system. Instead of going to directly to prison, the child may be given a chance to change or to renew or to, to change or re, to be rehabilitated. No? Sa ating tiyotag na uh, bahay pag-asa, the office that was created by Republic Act 10630. Okay, where we house the child in conflict with the law who are not uh, qualified for release on recognizance or those who are not totally exempted from criminal liability. Now, 18 to 70, this is the age of full responsibility. Buo po ang kanilang responsibilidad. So, ulitin ko po, yung 15 pababa, walang criminal liability. Parents might pay civil liability. Yung bit over 15 but under 18, conditional age po yan because we look on the concept of discernment. Ano po yung discernment? Yung intellectual ability of the child to know what is right from wrong and to know the possible consequences of the act. Okay. And 18 to 70, obviously, they have the full capacity. They have the full responsibility now. Now, bakit hanggang 70? Because yung 71 and above may be given a privilege mitigating pursuant to the provision of mitigating circumstances under our book one. I hope that's clear. So the correct answer is letter A. Then practice the techniques aka. Ano po ba yun? Techniques. Basic techniques po ito to enhance our mind power that I read from the book on mind power. I forgot the author of the book. Ano po yung A? Ginamit na po natin kanina yun. That is the use of acronym to easily memorize, especially enumeration. Okay? Just like this. We have the acronym SLURF. We apply that in habitual delinquency under Article 62, Rule Number 5 of the Book 1. Ano po yung anim na crime na pasok sa habitual delinquency if you commit them for at least three or more within the period of 10 years from the last conviction. Yun po yung S, Serious Physical Injury. L, Less Serious Physical Injury. E, Estafa. R, robbery, F, falsification, and T for theft. So you cannot forget anymore one of the six because you have an acronym. SAND, we apply that in the principle of criminology. They are the four basic nature of criminology. Social science, applied science, nationalistic, and dynamic. Now, what about SAFE? CR, yung SAFE, we use that in the Interpol. They are the four languages used in the Interpol. Spanish, Arabic, French, and English. Now, if we add CR, they become six. Yan naman po ang official language used in the United Nations. They added Chinese and Russian language or languages. Then to identify keywords. So, in word anatomy, keyword is very, very important. So, if we identify keywords, then we can easily catch up the answer. But remember, keywords are not something that you just memorize. It's better that you understand the meaning of that keyword. And the last A stands for analysis, no, association technique. The easiest way to recall or to remember things that we study is to relate them, associate them with things that we already know or understand. Okay? So that we can easily remember them and you can easily understand them. Okay? So, kung mahilig ka sa basketball, sa sports, i-relate mo sa sports yung mga terms na mga pinag-aaralan mo sa mga subject mo. Okay. So, we will be having more of the tips as we go along. Okay? After I finish the second part, uh, I will be coming up with a series of lectures 
maybe I will put up a canvas or a poll here in my YouTube channel. What you want to clarify with, especially with criminal law, with criminalistics, with Leia. Kasi marami mga gray, gray part yan, especially ang criminal law. No? Yung iba nakoconfuse pa rin doon sa complex crime, compound crime, yung continuing crime, special complex crime. Yung pagkakaiba ng recidivis, reiteration, uh, habitual delinquency, and quasi-offenses. So, we will be coming up with a PowerPoint or video presentation for that for the succeeding days. Okay? I hope you participate in the poll so that I can be of great help to you. Okay? The eighth rule, don't forget the basic. Especially in criminalistics, many simple questions just dealt with the basic rule. And sometimes there's a problem. If we study a lot of things, we tend to forget the basic. But remember, the basic are the rules that we cannot just easily change because they are the foundation of whatever subject that we are studying. Then we have the Eighth one or the ninth one, get abreast with current events, especially in sociology and correction and lay somehow. Examiners give questions really relevant to current news and events in our country that are related to our societal condition that is affecting our crimes, crime rate. Just like now, the COVID-19, definitely that might be asked now in the board because that is the always topic now in the news, in the television, in the newspaper, or even in the Facebook, okay? So please, get in touch with the current issues, especially those affecting the, the entire country, affecting our social conditions, our criminalities, and others. And last but not the least, maximize your time. No, this is not the last. Maximize your time and avoid being careless. I already said that a while ago. Maximize the number of hours given to you to answer 100 items. Hindi po yan pabilisan matapos kung hindi paramihan ng tamang sagot. Kung kailangan reviewin mo ng reviewin, bago mo i-finalize yung sagot at isalagay sa answer sheet, then do it. Because that will make you a top notcher or a passer in the exam. Oh, okay, so this is now the case illustration. We have Chan. We have Peter and James. So here, the relationship is very clear. John is the father of Peter. Peter is the father of James. Therefore, John is the grandfather of James. And James is the grandson of John. Now, let's go back to the question. John killed James. Okay? So, definitely, we cannot choose infanticide because infanticide deals with an element of age there is no mention on the facts of the case about the age of the victim so infanticide can never be an option okay so we eliminate infanticide now is there a relationship between john and james obviously there is a direct relationship john is the grandfather of James. So when relationship enters, we may think now of parasite because that is one essential element of a parasite, the relationship between the killer and the victim. Okay? So, are we going to think of homicide or murder? Not yet. No, the proper sequence when we deal with crimes against person is we have to think of abortion because that is the very basic killing of unborn fetus so if the baby is already born abort so that's for this second part of how to answer the CLE thank you for listening and I hope that I have I was able to give a part of my knowledge a little of my knowledge and I hope that it could help you a lot those who are taking will be taking the board, those who are teaching in the criminology or in other courses, you can I hope this can be of help and it can be of, of use to you. Okay? May God or Allah be with you and may God bless us all. And we hope that this pandemic will soon be off so that we can go back to the real normal. But as of now, we have to be disciplined enough to follow the new normal, okay? 
So, think every day as a positive situation uh, because as of now, we are in pandemic. Uh, mental health condition is a very, very issue now uh, to people because every time that there is changes in our life, we are being subjected to either stress, anxiety, and the worst is depression. And depression is usually the primary cause of suicidal cases. Okay? So thank you very much. God bless and uh, keep safe.